Hi everyone, Joker plays here and today is the second part of our calculations or physics uh, videos that I am putting out. Today we're going to focus on the strength of the thrusters and the weight capacity of the balloons. This is going to be unique. In order to do that, I'm going to change scenes and head over to my other build site. See you there. All right, everyone, I am now at my other testing ground in here. I've built two assemblies, very similar in size, one containing one additional piece. What this does over here is this was my testing ground that I used to test the actual force of a thruster. This was a unique test overall because what I ended up doing was I tried to figure out the weight uh, in terms of what it takes to lift up these assemblies. So here, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to use the flat pieces with a known value that each stud equals one pound of thrust. Okay, so each stud on a thin piece, we're going to say equals one pound. And so if you take the total weight of this an entire assembly here, I'm going to call it 412 studs. These are 12 16 by 2 by 1 pieces stacked. And then at the top, we have a 8 by 2 by 1 and then a 6 by 2 by 1. Okay, so in total, that equates to 412 studs. We're going to call that 412 pounds. On this side, we have the exact same assembly, but another 6 by 2 by 1 piece at the top, bringing the total weight to 424 studs, or what we're going to call 424 pounds. So this stack here on the right is just 10 studs lighter, and this stud, and this stack here on the left is 10 studs heavier. We're going to release them and see the results. You'll see that one will fly and one will stay where it's at. Anybody else concerned with what's going on with my go-kart there in the background? Let's go check this out. Hmm, interesting. This one's in that building. My hot rod seems to be in the building here. Uh, I wonder what they look like on the inside. Oh, look at this. That's... That's, uh... That's interesting. All right, back to our test. All right, so now we are back in the game. In theory, everything should work. This has a thruster beneath it, and this does as well. The only difference is the additional 6 by 2 by one piece at the top, making this piece exactly 12 pounds heavier than this one, or 12 studs, however you want to look at it. I'm going to look at it in terms of weight. This is my calculated value. So let's start with the lighter one. This one is, again, 412 studs uh, in weight, or we're going to call 412 pounds. Click it on, and it does move. And there it goes. All right. All right, now this one over here was the one that was 12 additional studs or 12 additional pounds heavier. Let's give it a go. We can hear the thruster running, but it is not moving. Therefore, the thruster does not have enough thrust to move this. We could probably just throw this in there. There you can see the thruster. Perfect. So we got no lift, right? So therefore, the strength of this thruster is between 424 and 412. Therefore, we can probably say 420 or 420 pounds of thrust is what we get out of this small thruster. So if you are going to start lifting some stuff using thrusters for propulsion, obviously if you're going straight up, you will need the full force of the thruster. But now if you want, you can calculate the number of pieces that you have to determine the number of thrusters you need to go up into the air. And oh my God, what is going on up there? Okay, back to the video. Um, this allows you to calculate how many thrusters you may need to go up into the air uh, it does not account for the thrust you need to move forward. That's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, you can see that the weight dynamics are very much alive in LEGO Fortnite. And how they do it uh, is basically calculatable. 
Um, why is this? All right, everybody, now it's time to calculate the weight or the pounds of thrust we can get from a large thruster. This one was kind of interesting. So I've got 16 by 2 stacked 9 high, 2 wide, and then I've got an additional 8 16 by 2s, 4 on each side. Uh, so that equates to a big number, 1,088 total studs. So we're going to call that 1,088 pounds. And then I added another 6 by 2 for a total of 12 more pounds for a grand total of 1,100 pounds. And we're going to activate the thruster. And it is starting to move very slowly. And you see... Barely. Okay, so what we're going to do, it went up. We're going to call this 1,100 pounds of thrust out of a large thruster. Now, if you saw in the calculation for the small thruster, that ended up being 420 pounds. So a large thruster is still shy of three small thrusters. Three small thrusters equates to 1,260 pounds whereas one large thruster would be 1,100 pounds of thrust. Therefore, if you're going to do thrusters, it's going to be more efficient to run three small than one large. Um, all depends what you do, but they don't kind of equate to each other more like the small balloons do for five small to every one large. Um, I was kind of thinking this was going to be three small, uh, but three small is definitely generating... 120 pounds more pound 120 pounds more of thrust than what one large engine would do so something to keep in mind um, this was kind of unique i uh, love doing the math that was fun so so now when it comes to the weight of the balloons like how much weight can they actually carry the small one here in particular i have an object that is 316 studs we're going to call this 316 pounds and then one over here that it's uh, just slightly smaller than that and you can see that we're generating some lift but it seems the one that is 316 pounds is neutral buoyant so if we push it it's gonna fly pretty level so we're gonna call that neutral so that's neutral at 316 pounds and if you got a chance to watch Kaboom's video on the way balloons behave nowadays I'll put a link in the description that's gonna tell you that there's gonna be a terminal height depending on the weight versus the number of balloons that you add as well. So that was a good video to watch. It kind of supplements this, but in particular, I'm focusing on the weights. And so for the weight of a small balloon, we're gonna call it 316 pounds. All right, if you are wondering if there's a difference between a balloon that is actuated versus one that is already afloat, this will tell you. Utilizing the neutral buoyancy weight of 316 studs, you can see that we are not any higher, not any lower. It is neutral. So the small balloon is a small balloon whether or not it's activated or not. Let's get this out of the way and move on to the next one. All right, folks, we made it to calculating the weight or the strength of the large balloon. And this took a lot. Um, I am up to a total of 1,576 studs. We're going to call that 1,576 pounds of neutral buoyancy for one large balloon. If you're doing the math, if you take 1,576 pounds, you divide it by what a small balloon is, 316 pounds. We just learned that it takes five small balloons to equal the lifting capacity of one large balloon. So keep that in mind. You can use one large balloon or you can use five small balloons. Either way, that's going to equate the same weight. That's kind of a good tip. Everybody kind of wondered what that was going to be like. Um, if, you, if you do the math, it comes out to 4.987 something or another, um, which is basically five balloons. So five small balloons for every one large balloon. The answer has been officially answered. Now to get this out of the way. All right, so at the end of the day, why is all of this important? Well, 
When you understand the weight dynamics of the various materials or how they react, then you'll be able to build better, more balanced vehicles. I have in my lot over here that seems to be weird. And that one just fell. Uh, that one's kind of stuck in the air too. I don't know what's going on in this world. Kind of unique. Uh, we'll just go with it. Um, but yeah, I, I've got various built aircraft uh, all over the place and vehicles that are all very well balanced, different designs. Uh, hoping to add this one here to a tutorial soon. Um, but all of this plays a role in your construction of materials, buildings, vehicles, airships, you name it. Uh, this is where weight dynamics come into play. So I just wanted to share with you what I know and what got me to where I'm at on these builds. And so now that you too have the same knowledge in terms of how weight dynamics work in LEGO Fortnite. And I look forward to seeing your builds that are better balanced and better, well, suited for flight. So everyone, thank you again for watching. And until next time, keep gaming in your crosshairs. Hi everybody, real quick here. YouTube seems to think that you're going to like the two videos that you see on your screen. So if you get a chance, please like and subscribe this video and click on some additional content I have to offer. So yeah, thanks for watching.